protecting your valuable digital stuff. It's uh, something everyone thinks about, right? Especially if you're like us, you love tinkering, building in your own home lab. We've all been there. You're happily setting up VMs, Linux containers on Proxbox. And then that little voice pops up. Hey, uh, is this important data really safe? Like safe from accidents? Disasters. So today we're doing a deep dive into getting offsite backups sorted for Proxmox virtual environment, PVE, and local backups. Often pretty straightforward, especially with things like Proxmox backup server, PBS. That part usually works. But getting that crucial one offsite copy, you know, for that solid 3 to one backup plan, that can feel like a real puzzle sometimes. Our mission today, unpack the best simplest ways to do this. We're going to focus on a really popular and uh, pretty cost-effective option, Backblaze B2. Yeah, and this whole deep dive, it's based on a, uh, a really detailed guide about backing up Proxmox with Backblaze B2. Plus, we've layered in lots of real-world tips, you know, stuff from the home lab community trenches. It's funny how that 3 two, one strategy, three copies, two different media, one offsite is like the golden rule. Yeah. Everyone says it. But, you know, the real trick for home lab folks, it's that tools like PBS make those first two copies, the local ones, almost too easy. The real challenge isn't just knowing the rule. It's finding that offsite solution that doesn't well, turn into a second full-time job to manage. That is so true. The local stuff, yeah, just hums along. You set up PBS, it does its thing, hourly, daily, weekly snapshots. It's great. But then you hit that one, the offsite copy, and bam, brick wall for a lot of people. Why is that the part that trips people up so consistently? What's the, you know, the core difficulty we're trying to solve? That's a really good question. And yeah, lots of users hit this. Um, take Tom from one of the sources, classic setup. He had a Dell Precision 5D20 for PVE, an Optiplex 5060 running PBS. Locals, perfect, just like you said, mm. but offsite. Constant headache, he's looking at duplicati, circle and backrest, just spinning his wheels, trying to find something secure, low maintenance, something he didn't have to constantly fiddle with. Oh, I feel that pain. I remember spending days fighting with permissions in LXCs, trying something similar. Tom's first idea sounds clever on paper, right? Run Duplicati in an LXC container. Sure. Mount the PBS data store using NFS, that's a network file system, basically sharing a folder over the network. Then just let Duplicati push it all up to B2. Mm -hmm. Simple. Or... Not so simple, it turns out. Exactly. The pitfalls hit fast. Running that container unprivileged, suddenly you've got permission problems. Read-only mounts, writes, failing. Yeah. Okay, so switch to a privileged container. Well, now you've got security alarm bells ringing because suddenly this thing needs internet access and it has root-level privileges. Not well, ideal. Not ideal at all. And stepping back, this isn't just Tom's story. You see this all over the home lab forums and communities. It's a shared struggle. People arguing, you know, Diplicati's fine, just got to handle its quirks. Others are like, no way, Suraclone is king, simple, fast. Then a few others mentioned backrest because it has a GY. It yeah. really just highlights the main question. What's mm -hmm. the best way? Secure, easy, and, you know, right for you without driving yourself crazy. Okay, so amidst all that confusion, all these yeah. different tools and their, uh, let's call them personalities, yeah. how did Backblaze B2 float to the top? What makes it the go-to for so many? Price. Honestly, the biggest thing, hands down, is cost and how predictable it is. We're talking roughly $5 per terabyte per month. Compare that to AWS, S3, or even something like CrashPlan. B2 is just way, way cheaper for this kind of storage. That makes it super appealing, especially if you're smart about what you back up, focusing on the essentials. Wow, yeah, less than five bucks a month for three terabytes. That example is really powerful. Someone storing 3TP critical stuff, family photos, things you absolutely cannot lose for less than a coffee a month. Using B2's archive features, that's hard to ignore. Are there hidden costs though? Like what about getting gate out, egress fees? Are they reasonable if you actually need to restore? That's always the question with cloud storage, isn't it? But yeah, B2's egress fees are generally seen as reasonable for typical recovery scenarios. And beyond just cost, B2 has other practical wins. It plays nice with the tools people actually use, like Circlone and Duplicacy. And crucially, it has lifecycle rules. You set these up and they automatically delete old backups after, say, a month or whatever you choose. Mm -hmm. Keeps the cost predictable, stops the bill creeping up without you having to manually prune things. Ah, uh, automation. Love it. Exactly. And this all feeds into that strategic backup idea from the sources. Focus B2 on the irreplaceable stuff. Your VMs, your containers, your personal files. Don't waste that cheap storage backing up like a 10 TB media library you could just re-download if the worst happened. Be strategic. Makes total sense. Okay, let's dig into those tools people are using for the offsite part. Duplicati first. It definitely looks nice, right? Web UI encryption deduplication sounds good. Some folks use it to sync PBS backups straight from a USB drive to B2. Mm -hmm. Seems promising initially. It seems promising, yeah. 
But that fussy nature comes out pretty quick. The big problems are the ones we touched on. Those read-only headaches and unprivileged LXCs, the security worries with privileged ones. And here's the kicker, the thing people often miss with Duplicati. It's compacting process. It's meant to clean up old backup chunks. But the way it works, it can actually end up downloading data from B2 to do this garbage collection, which, yeah, can unexpectedly drive up your costs. Ouch, that's a nasty surprise. Downloading data to delete data. Right, a classic hidden gotcha. Now, there are workarounds involving NFS permissions and LXE configs to get read-write without going full privileged, but honestly, for many people, it just starts feeling like overkill for what should be a simple task. Too much complexity. Okay, so Duplicati might be more trouble than it's worth for this specific job. What about Sir Clone? That seems to be the crowd favorite. Lightweight, simple. Why does it get so many votes? Simplicity and speed are the big ones, and no GUI needed. That appeals to a lot of command line comfortable folks. The standard approach is pretty straightforward. Back up locally using PBS yeah. first, get those reliable local copies, then just run and circle on script to either sync or move those PBS backup files over to your B2 bucket. Right. And you could trigger that script.how after right. a backup job. Yeah, exactly. You could use a hook script with vsdum, Proxmox's backup tool. Something simple like hashtag that bin bash, then check if the backup just ended, if $1 backup then, and if so, Sir Clone move the dump directory to Backblaze. Or probably easier for most, just schedule it with cron, you know, Linux's task scheduler. Set it to run automatically every Sunday morning at 3 a.m. or whatever works. Like 030 root backup 2 dot sh. Simple. Yep. That kind of automation is key. Set it and forget it, mostly. And that B2 hard delete flag sounds useful too, making sure old files are truly gone from B2, not just hidden. Exactly. Keeps things clean. Plus, people report really good restore speeds. Someone mentioned getting up to 500 megabits per second on a gigabit line. That's pretty quick if you need your data back fast. That's impressive. Any downsides at all to Circlone? Anything that makes people pause? The only thing that sometimes comes up is pretty minor. Circlone, by default, doesn't create empty directories in the B2 bucket. For most backup scenarios, that's really not an issue. So yeah, maybe a tiny deal breaker for a very specific need, but generally not a problem. Okay, good to know. Then there's duplicacy. Paid but maybe worth it for some. It's like $20 up front, then $5 a year. Yeah, that's the model. Its main selling points are being lightweight and having something called lock-free deduplication, which can be more efficient in some cases. We saw one user doing something clever with it, organizing their files into priority groups, like high, medium, low. Helps keep the backup size and cost down by being selective, shows its flexibility. Interesting strategy. And of course, there are always other options bubbling up in the community, right? Mm. Oh, yeah. People mention Hetzner storage box, a different model, flat pricing, supports SMB, which is handy. Borg backup is another popular one, often paired with a local NAS. Some folks use Borgbase as the offsite target for that. And if you're already in the Synology ecosystem, their hyper backup tool actually integrates really well with Backblaze B2. So mm -hmm. options exist. Definitely options. But thinking about everything, all the feedback, the pros and cons, what emerges as the sort of uh, most recommended combo for Proxmox offsite. Yeah, when you sift through all the community experience, the combination that really seems to hit the sweet spot for most people is Circlone plus Proxmox backup server plus Backblaze B2. Right, that trio seems to cover the base as well. It really does. Why? Well, first, it's simple. Install Circlone, configure the B2 remote, whip up a basic script. Pretty easy. Yeah. Second, it's cheap. You leverage B2's great pricing, use those lifecycle rules, your bills stay predictable. Makes sense. Third, it's reliable you avoid the complexities and potential pitfalls of something like Duplicati's compacting process. Yeah. It just moves files. Less moving parts, less to break. Exactly. And fourth, it's flexible. If down the road you decide B2 isn't for you or a better provider comes along, switching Circlone to point somewhere else is usually pretty straightforward. Okay, I like it. So for you listening, let's map out a quick plan. Actionable steps. One, install Circlone. Apt get install Circlone on Debian Ubuntu usually does it. Then run circlone config to set up your backblaze connection. Mm. Follow the prompts, it's pretty dighted. Two, point your PBS data store to an NFS share. Maybe something mounted at MN data store. Make sure PBS is writing backups there. Right, so circlone has a local directory to sync from. Three, create that sync script. Super simple. Maybe hashtag dot bin bash at the top, then rclone sync MN data store backblaze dot your bucket name b2 hard delete minage 4w. That minage 4w is neat. It tells Circlone only sync files older than four weeks. Gives your local PBS time to do its retention before uploading, potentially saving API calls and bandwidth, or you could sync everything. Depends on your strategy. Good point. Yeah. Adjust that as needed. Four, schedule it with cron. 
0303 root backup to 2.sha for a 3 a.m. Sunday yeah. and 5. Log into your Backblaze B2 account and set matching lifecycle rules on that bucket. Tell B2 to automatically delete files older than, say, four weeks or whatever matches your min age or retention goals. And that's basically it. That's it. Automated weekly offsite backups, no constant babysitting needed. Set it up once, check logs occasionally, done. Now, while we're talking backups, VMs and LXCs are critical, obviously. But what about the Proxmox host itself, specifically the configuration files, usually in the etc. directory? Those are absolutely gold if you need to rebuild your host quickly. Forgetting those, oof, that can turn a potential quick recovery into a nightmare multi-day rebuild. Oh, absolutely crucial point. Don't forget the host config. So how do you back that up easily? Couple of good ways. One popular method is using etkeeper. Uh, yeah, etkeeper puts yep. etc. under version control. Right, like git. Exactly. Tracks every change, lets you roll back. Mm -hmm. And you can configure Etkeeper to push its changes to a remote Git repository. You could even host that Git repo privately on B2 using its S3 compatible API, or just use GitHub GitLab. Gives you offsite version history of your core configs. Nice. Versioning is powerful. What's a simpler option? Even simpler. Just use Circlone again. Schedule another small cron job. Iclone sync, etc. PVE, backblaze.your-config bucket PZE, backup dash jersey back, backblaze.your-config bucket PV dash archive date plus percent, action free backup jersey desync, something like that. Okay, so just sync the etc. PVE directory regularly to a separate B2 bucket or folder. Yeah, maybe keep a few dated archive copies using backup dear. It's a small thing, but huge for disaster recovery. Don't skip it. Solid advice. Okay, zooming out again, the big picture here. Sure. What's the core philosophy? It really boils down to this. Back up what you absolutely cannot replace. That's the mantra. Prioritize your VMs, your containers, the unique configurations you've built, and of course, any irreplaceable personal data, family photos, documents, whatever. Right. And equally important, what? Not to back up this way. Skip the stuff you can easily get back. That massive 10 terabyte Plex library filled with movies and shows you ripped or downloaded, you can probably re-rip or re-download those if needed. Don't waste expensive offsite storage on that. It's about being selective. Mm. And recognizing there's no single perfect answer for everyone, is there? Not at all. The best Proxmox backup plan is the one that fits your specific needs, your budget, your home lab setup, your risk tolerance. It's personal. But for most home lab folks, that Circlone plus PBS plus B2 combo seems to hit a real sweet spot. Yeah, I think so. It just balances ease of use, cost, and reliability incredibly well for this common use case. It's rock solid. But hey, if you really, really want a GUI, Maybe duplicacy is worth investigating, despite the cost. Or if B2's model doesn't appeal, look at Hetzner's storage box. Or maybe mm. Borg with Borgbase, there are valid alternatives. Absolutely. The key thing, whatever tool or strategy you land on, yeah. the real win is just knowing it's done, having uh -huh. that peace of mind, knowing your home lab, your projects, your data. It's safe. It's recoverable. That's the ultimate reward. Couldn't agree more. That peace of mind is priceless. So wrapping up, we've gone through the whole journey, why offsite matters for Proxmox, the challenges, and how simple, effective solutions like Circlone paired with Backblaze B2 can really deliver that security and, uh, yeah, that peace of mind. Which leads us perfectly into a final thought for you, the listener, to chew on. What hidden data gems, what digital treasures are maybe lurking in your setup and your digital life that you're overlooking right now? Things you absolutely, positively cannot afford to lose. 